1982, a world filled with danger and strife. The globe sits like a time bomb with a short fuse as terrorism spreads like an ugly cancer, threatening the fabric of Western civilization. Such agencies as the CIA, Scotland Yard, and Interpol are helpless. And so the world must turn to a much more potent force, operating under one guideline, to stake out and intercept international outlaws and terrorism of every kind, a top secret worldwide agency. Its code name... Matsoi! Mobile Attack Train Zionists Operation International. You should only live twice. God knows once isn't that nice. Just take our advice. You should only live twice. Rabbis. Good morning, Miss Geltpenny. I heard you had a damn close call on that Jamaican job. Believe me, it is a pleasure for Rabbi Feinberg and I to once again gaze down upon those more than ample breasts. <laughs> Rabbi? Certainly. You appear to be in good health. Why don't you boys drop by tonight? A little soup? We could play a little pinochle. But what would we do for a fourth? I don't know. I could always play two hands. Geld Penny, are they here yet? Right away, sir. You better go in. Imus is upset. Some nasty business has come up. Ah, Kimmel and Feinberg. Good morning, Emmis. Custine. Excellent work in the Caribbean. The president was quite pleased. I trust your flight was a pleasant one from Kingston. Indeed, sir. Isaiah and I are looking forward to our vacation in Miami. I'm afraid Miami's out of the question, Olive. <laughs> you and Gemmel are likely to be quite busy for the next few weeks, Custy. Dead chickens. Tens of thousands of them dying throughout the world. We've isolated the cause. A deadly chicken virus which transmits itself through the egg embryo. We believe Goyam is behind it all. <laughs> Goyam, the global organization of young irrational maniacs. <laughs> Precisely. We already know they control large portions of the world's grain market. By eliminating the egg supply, they force us to eat hot cereal for breakfast. They, they know, know how, how much we, we hate it. <laughs> we want you to obtain a sample of the virus so that we can make a vaccine and smash Goyam once and for all. It will be a pleasure. Gentlemen, follow me. I've been working on a few things here that may prove quite useful to you. From your mouth to God's ears. <clears throat> Continuing. Turbo-charged moped. <laughs> Releases chicken fat. <laughs> Most useful when being pursued. Most ingenious. Ah, now this is new. I just invented these babies. Exploding matzo balls. <laughs> Hollow core, plastic explosive. Ah! Damn it, Kimmelman. Why don't you pay attention? This may save your life. Now, here's something I'm quite proud of. It's it. Careful. You'll find this to be quite an improvement over the old ones. Most importantly of all, Goyam's fortress is virtually impenetrable. The only way in is by air. Salami rockets. <laughs> Two per man, worn on this belt. 
They should keep you aloft for a period of up to one hour. God willing. God willing. I needn't tell you of the risk involved. Therefore, I want you to have this. Carry it under your tongue, and should you encounter any situation even you can't handle, bite it and swallow. What is it? My wife's kishka. <laughs> One thing still puzzles me. Why would Goyam be behind all this? What are you asking questions? They're Goyam. They're maniacs. Our two best men. Pet, we want you alive <laughs> because you are the last. Think of it, the last of the species. <laughs> and Matsoi and those, those, those rabbis, they think they can stop me. <laughs> well, we will crush them, smash. <laughs> Shiksas! <laughs> A towel! Ooh, itchy, itchy. Oh, Ow. Ouch. Ouch. I have some bad news for you. Yes? I have decided not to go to the sorority dance tonight. Oh, gosh, golly, gee whiz, why not? Because I have tickets for the Johnny Mann show. Oh, lucky! <laughs> and Kimmelman. Well, Emmanuel, our old friend, Dr. Tsuris. By me, the name still spells trouble. So nice of you to drop in. <laughs> we would have brought some Danish, but you could drop dead before you'll find a decent bakery in this town. Oh, very amusing. <laughs> you will wish that you never set foot here. Put them on a conveyor. Fasten the bagels! Could I interest you perhaps in a weekend at Grossinger's? <laughs> Live and be well. Enough, Shik says go, go! So, this is what you're after, huh? My little chicken virus. Well, you can't have it. It's a pity. <laughs> so, what do you think of my matzo blades of death? Hmm? Very intriguing, what? Well, goodbye, Feinberg. Goodbye, Kimmelman. <laughs> <laughs> Emmanuel, by me, this is no joyride. As I see it, there is but one way out of this rather difficult predicament. Eat my bagel. I'm not hungry, but I suppose I could do with a small nosh. Go ahead, eat, eat. But I suggest you hurry, for even as I speak, the matzo blades of death are threatening to wipe out my future generation. Thank you, sir. Yes, I will. 
and Goyam is smashed forever. Yes. There's only one question that remains. Yes, indeed. Where the devil are those two boys? You should only live twice. God knows once isn't that nice. Just take our advice. You should only live twice. Tonight, Jamie Farr, Rosemary. Artie Johnson, Barbara Mandrell, Doc Severinsen, Jaro, Mel Brooks, George Gobo, Wayland and Madam, Alice Cooper, The Hudson Brothers, Jan Murray, Marina Oswald, Bowser, Vincent Price, Lucille Ball, Raymond St. Jacques, Arnold Zippel, Phyllis Diller, Kiss, and Rich Hall, along with 33 other stars, are all in the Hollywood Cubes. And here's the master of the Hollywood Cubes, Dr. Erno Rubin. Thank you, Kenny, and welcome, everyone, to the Hollywood Cubes, the celebrity-packed game show with 54 of your favorite stars. And while we're at it, let's say hello to our stars. Hello, stars! Hello! I hope you're all bright and fresh and ready to play. Okay, great. Then let's meet our two contestants. First, we have Barry Secunda. Barry, what do you do for a living? Well, Erno, I'm a clerk at the Municipal Court Building here in Los Angeles. Any family, Barry? Uh, yes, I have a wife named Wendy and three children named Nancy, Sandy, and Nancy. You have uh, two children named Nancy? That's right, Erno. Okay, well, good to have you here. And playing against Barry is Tab Hunter. <laughs> Tab, what do you do for a living? Well, Erno, I'm a Hollywood movie star, and I've been in over 40 films, and I live in Beverly Hills. That sounds exciting. Do you know the rules, Tab? Oh, sure. We play this at home all the time. Well, let me repeat them for anyone new to the Hollywood Cubes. The contestants pick one of our 54 stars in the cube. If you correctly match their answer, you get to turn the cube. Get each side a solid color and you win. And don't forget, pick the star in the secret cube and you get to turn the cube an unlimited number of times. Kenny, why don't you tell them what they're playing for? Money! All right, you'll be playing for money. Let's begin with Tab. Let's see, uh, Rose Marie. Okay, Rosie? Yes, I know. In a survey of 10,000 women, how many said they used pictures of naked men for sexual stimulation? Well, Erno, you know I remember when they came by and asked me that question. Can you remember what your answer was? I bought three pictures. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, could you repeat that question, Erno? In a survey of 10,000 women, how many said they used pictures of naked men for sexual stimulation? I'll say, Erno, 6,629. Well, what do you say, Tab? Do you think she's bluffing? Uh, I, I think she is. I disagree. Of 10,000 women, only 4,387 said they used pictures of naked men. You guessed right, Tab. <laughs> now, give the cube a twist. Uh, let's see. Uh, t top row, east to west. Top row, east to west. Hold on, stars! <laughs> All right, interesting strategy. Now it's Barry Secunda's turn. Who will it be, Barry? Okay, uh... I'll go with Rich Little, Erno. Rich, this is a question for Claude Rains. Uh, I don't do Claude Rains. Uh, pick, pick someone I do. How about Woody Allen? Uh, no. Marlon Brando? Nope. Rod Steiger? No. Oh, come on, even I do Rod Steiger. You call yourself a smart man. Let me tell you something. <laughs> a smart man doesn't give away... Just ask the question. All right, Rich. Schizophrenia. Is it a physical or a psychological illness? Hmm. Uh, psychological. No, no physical. Barry? I agree. 
Schizophrenia has a direct relationship to enzyme levels in the brain. Physical All is right. correct. Okay. Barry, it's your chance to twist the cube. All right. Uh, left row, south to north. Oh, boy. South to north. Okay, Barry, go ahead. <laughs> well, that really mixes things up. Tab? Uh, Erno, I, I like Phyllis Diller. <laughs> Phyllis. Yes, Erno. Vanity, thy name is woman. What great writer wrote these words? It wasn't my plastic surgeon, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Phyllis. Seriously? Francis Bacon. I disagree. No, it was William Shakespeare. <laughs> Very good, Tab. You weren't tricked by that answer. No. <laughs> No, no, but it's funny because many people think that Shakespeare's real nom de plume was Francis Bacon, but uh, actually there is far more evidence to prove that Marlowe was the real boy. Well, however you figure it out, it gives you another shot at the cube. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, let's see, this time I'll go uh, right side, north to south. <laughs> mm, I'm beginning to see what you're doing, Ted. You're trying to get all of the green ones together. Good plan. Okay, Barry. Uh, Willie Tyler and Lester to block. There's no blocking in this game, Barry. William Lester. With wood and its byproducts getting scarcer every day, what wooden items has the government designated as the first to be processed and pulverized in a crisis? Well, Lester, what do you think? Well, the first thing I'd pulverize is this game show, baby. <laughs> <laughs> now stop it. Erno will say abandoned houses. Barry? I agree. According to a government emergency plan, ventriloquist dummies would be the first things processed and pulverized in a crisis. Sorry, Barry. So it's Tab's turn. I think I just discovered a new way to meet doctors. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Tab. Well, let, let me try those two nuts from Friday. Uh, Mark Blankfield and uh, Bruce Mahler. You know what that means, Tab? You picked the secret cube! <clears throat> Mark and Bruce, this one is for the freaked out druggist and the Mexican disc jockey. Uh, I can handle it. I can handle it. Ah, uh, la musica, la musica de los Commander Cody. <laughs> Mark and Bruce, listen very carefully because you're the secret cube. Charlemagne, the legendary king of the French, did he die in 814, 816, or 821? What do you I think? think Erno, <laughs> we think it was 814. Yeah. Uh, AM or PM? AM <laughs> <laughs> or PM, you guys are wild. Okay, Tab, for the secret cube, do you agree or disagree? I'll agree. Charlemagne died in the year 814. You did it, Tab. Okay. You get to turn the cube as many times as you need. Uh, I think you're turning that thing too fast, Tab. Uh, I think you're turning that thing too fast. Uh, speed up, Tom, and I'll the cube. Nice. This is the Friday edition with your correspondents, Melanie Chartoff and Rich Hall. Good evening. I'm Melanie Chartoff, and these are tonight's top stories. This week, the coldest temperatures in a century hit the Midwest with travelers stranded, livestock frozen, and over 60 people dead. With a special report on this bitter winter storm, we take you now live to South Dakota and our correspondent, John Rourke. John, what's the update on that story? On the... John? We'll try to get back to John for the spring thaw. Rich? 
Well, it was uh, reported today that the Reagan administration has decided to beef up the nation's civil defense program at a cost of $10 billion. The new program is said to be able to save 80% of the population in the event of a nuclear war. Uh, the 20% that would die would be made up of people who uh, tried desperately to be part of that 80%. In other news, <laughs> last week the Polish military government retreated from an earlier statement which had blamed Poland's current problems on the Jews. In a new position released today, the Polish government now puts the blame on dissident blacks and Puerto Ricans. <laughs> It was revealed this week that CBS reporter Mike Wallace, known for catching his interview subjects off guard, was himself caught making disparaging racial remarks during the taping of a segment of 60 Minutes. Outraged by this blatant hypocrisy, Wallace stormed his own office and through vicious and persistent questioning, reduced himself to a blubbering, shameful shell of a human being who promised to write himself a formal letter of resignation. Rich? In a landmark settlement, AT&T agreed this week to divest itself of 22 Bell System companies. Uh, the agreement breaks up the world's largest monopoly and opens up the telecommunications field to greater competition. For example, a uh, small company, say, uh, Rich Hall's uh, telephone company, could uh, compete directly with Ma Bell, offering better service, friendly operators, and uh, unlimited free calls. Now, instead of those pesky seven-digit numbers, uh, we'd only use two digits. See, how many people do you know anyway? You know, plus free coffee and uh, donuts at uh, every Rich Hall phone store. <laughs> Chocolate ones. And we're open late. So if you're interested, dial uh, 32 and uh, ask for Rich. <laughs> Former National Security Advisor Richard Allen, who claimed a lapse of memory to explain his failure to turn over cash he received from a Japanese magazine, used that same excuse again today when he showed up for work at the White House, apparently forgetting that he had resigned two weeks ago. <laughs> Rich? CBS News announced Monday that it will purchase bulletproof vests for its uh, correspondents who cover President Reagan. Uh, spokesman for CBS stated that, uh, quote, this is just a security precaution. Uh, we really don't think the president would take a shot at anybody on our staff. Also in the news, President Reagan last week reversed his campaign pledge to end draft registration, a system he once called immoral and destructive. Reagan now says the draft is moral and destructive. Well, uh, this just in, uh, this morning in the Central American country of uh, Honduras, a woman wearing nothing but uh, saltines over her eyes uh, stunned a crowd of wise-cracking penguins by singing Wooly Bully in uh, Esperanto. There's apparently no connection between this and a uh, picture of uh, Ed Asner jogging uh, through his neighborhood in Beverly Hills. As revealed in the forthcoming issue of the American Heritage magazine, Franklin Delano Roosevelt had a secret tape system in his office, much like the one later used by Richard Nixon. The magazine quotes from transcripts of the tapes, which include a conversation where John Dean warns FDR that the cover-up of World War II simply won't work. Down in the state of uh, Maryland, is attempting this week to ban an eighth grade production of Inherit the Wind, a play about a Tennessee town attempting to ban the teaching of evolution. In a related development, the state of Alabama announced its intention of banning any movie based on the banning in Maryland of a play about the banning in Tennessee. <laughs> Meanwhile, in uh, Snake River, Idaho, the most sensational trial of the decade got underway this week. Uh, four and a half year old Ricky Wise, accused of beating his first grade teacher to death with a wiffle ball bat, <laughs> became the youngest person to ever be tried for murder. The courtroom scene bordered on sensationalism with uh, Ricky tearfully claiming over and over again that he was innocent. But insurmountable evidence from the state prosecutor was clearly pointing toward a guilty verdict. When suddenly the case took a bizarre new twist with the arrival of a surprise witness, 35-year-old Russ Burbick, a softy freeze ice cream vendor who claimed that uh, he'd observed someone carrying a wiffle ball bat near the scene of the crime. Not Ricky, but someone else. Someone who by spectacular coincidence was in the courtroom at that very moment. A man identified as Fred Peplo, a freelance courtroom sketch artist. <laughs> a scuffle ensued and Peplo was quickly subdued by authorities. Uh, if convicted, Peplo could face the death penalty, which under Idaho state law means the electric chair. I 
Ann Rich Hall. Oh. I'm Melanie Chardoff. Have a good weekend. <laughs> this has been the Friday edition with Melanie Chartoff and Rich Hall. Of uh, bachelor living, I was just sitting here looking at all these spectacular Christmas gifts I got about three weeks ago. Uh, chances are, if you're like me, you're up to your neck in Old Spice. <laughs> Boy, talcum shave, my favorite soap on a rope. <laughs> Should be great when those soap leash laws come into effect. Sorry. There's another one I'm seeing way too much of: processed, pasteurized cheese wedges. Mmm. <laughs> Things have the half-life of uranium. Why I like to use mine to decorate next year's tree. I think that pretty much captures the holiday spirit. <laughs> See, the secret is never throw away any food if you can use it around the house. For instance, maybe you had mackerel for dinner last night. Well, if you're cooking for one, you'll never finish it all by yourself. That's why whenever I'm in the basement, I always throw together a few of these cheap wooden trophy plaques. See there? That way you got a nice conversation piece for when friends come over. Make up a story about it. Tell them you bagged it off the keys last summer. <laughs> Have fun. Never, ever throw away old leftover steaks. Not when you can use them to make a pretty comprehensive meat map. <laughs> there it is. Just this morning, I finally came up with Utah. What? I've been looking for that for weeks. The little bone, by the way, represents the Great Salt Lake. Very important. A few more giblets and I'll have Hawaii. It'll be complete. It's fun and it's educational. You preppies will appreciate this one. Old shrimp tails make great, uh, great tassels for those locals. Yes, sir. I'm coming back inside. And of course, here's my favorite. Uh, if you're lucky enough to have those uh, crab legs for dinner last night, hang on to them. Makes a pretty sporty steering wheel cover. Plenty of grip action for the road there. I have one in my Falcon. So just a few tips there to make bachelor living a little bit easier for you. That's it for this week. I'm Rich Hall. Hi, I'm sitting between Ralph and Millie Damiano, probably two of Kiss's biggest fans. Listen, I understand that when Kiss goes on tour, that you follow them across country and uh, just to see all their shows. I mean, Millie and Ralph, doesn't this really get expensive for you? Well, it is expensive, but we try to uh, save by hitchhiking. And then usually someone in the show will give us a place to crash for the night. <laughs> it is worth it, Brandis. I'd rather see Kiss every night for a month than go to one show with Sticks or ACDC. Okay, let's watch Ralph and Millie's favorite band, Kiss!
March 1981, 432 very well-respected scientists met at an international conclave. Their purpose to view and discuss a documentary hosted by big-time actor Aldo Ray, which claimed to have indisputable evidence of the existence of UFOs. The scientists viewing the film were startled. They could not believe their eyes, and neither will you. Now, if you'll remind me when I finish with the Ashbecker account that on Thursday... Wait a minute, there's, there's, there's something wrong here. I, I'm on Highway 4, just outside of Alton Town, and there, there's a light following me. I better get the hell out of here. 157 miles an hour, and, and, and I'm still behind me. It's right behind me. It's right it's above me. It, it, oh, it, it's, it's got me. It's taking me up the ground. I'm going higher. Higher and higher. Wow, something's really wrong here. Oh, my goodness. An actual recording made by a traveling salesman who has not been seen since. <laughs> what was that bright light? We talked with scientist Ed Lewis, expert on unexplainable things. We put these magnesium oxide tapes through about 87 different tests. On the last test, Ed found something rather startling about the tapes. If you play this recording in reverse, this salesman's description takes on a whole new meaning. My first conclusion is that this sounds, at least to me anyway, very similar to the way people on another planet might talk. Is this indisputable evidence that UFOs exist? Wait, there's more. In the south of Tanzania, on a typical archaeological expedition, there's an important discovery. Archaeologist Ed Lewis finds an artifact in ruins over a million years old that clearly resembles a model of a flying saucer. Was this left on Earth by a visiting UFO? Isn't this indisputable evidence? Wait, there's more. Farmer Ed Lewis remembers. I was doing some late chores one night, and I, I heard some weird light over the cow pasture. I know uh, other farmers in the area were complaining about uh, unexplainable things happening to their cows, so I, I ran. I, I just got out of there. What Farmer Lewis is referring to is just one of many unaccountable cases of cattle humiliation. At cattle farms all across America, cows are found to be totally humiliated and for no apparent reason. There are no other marks, no clues, just an aftermath of cows who can't ever be looked straight in the face again. Don't you think this is indisputable evidence? Wait, there's more. An unretouched photo. Indisputable evidence? Huh? Wait, I got more for you. A young couple hypnotized by psychiatrist Ed Lewis to reaccount for an actual visit they experienced with creatures from a UFO. I remember. We were having a picnic. There was a bright light. Then we couldn't believe it. Two creatures from the light showed themselves. They were big, grotesque looking, shiny, flexible, but strong. Then we knew we had to go along. They said they just wanted to analyze us, find some answers. Well, I've got five more years of college, and then I'll probably go to cosmetology school. Well, have either one of you all thought of a junior college? Well, I, I applied to an auto mechanic school. 
I've even got some signed testimonials from people who've seen these UFOs. I'm telling you, what does it take to convince you? This is more, what more indisputable evidence could you ask for? I'm, they're there, they're there all over the place, and you don't want to believe me. That's what's wrong, you don't want to believe me. What does it take to convince you? Some three-headed monster from uh, the Zardos uh, to take you to another planet? Is that what does it take to convince you? They are there, and they are just testing us, and they're going to come and get us, and then, and we're not going to be prepared for them because you do not believe that they're there. Thank you for being with us tonight. I know you'll join us soon to take another look at something we cannot help from happening. Good night. Like we said, the scientists were startled when viewing this film resulting in a unanimous decision. In future international conclaves, all UFO documentaries to be presented must be pre-screened so as not to waste our time. Now, now, you obviously a sophisticated dude, right? I mean, a man who enjoys the finer things in life. You know what I'm talking about? Well, let me lay a little something on you, bro. I got some stuff here that's gonna blow your mind. So I ain't kidding with you, man. This stuff is heavy. Look at here. Schopenhauer's discourse on ethical realism. He goes, let's say, on pragmatism and the conflict of reason. You know that? Heidegger's radical empiricism and a pluralistic universe. Man, you got to check this out. Voltaire. <laughs> Voltaire? Genealogy of thought, Rousseau, Spinoza, hey baby, empirical solipsism, essay on cultural pragmatism, these some heavy dudes, man. William James, the meaning of truth, Francis Bacon, Novo Morgana, man. The principles of morality, hey baby, these guys laying down some badass theories, man. Oh, oh, wait, I know, I know. You're a nihilist, right? Nihilist, hmm? Check this out. <laughs> Nietzsche thus spake Zarathustra. Huh? No deal? Twilight of the Idols. Hey, wait, wait, wait. I know, I know, I know. You said an angst thing, right? Angst, angst. Kierkegaard's concept of the grave. I'm just, hey, come on, man. This is right up your alley, baby. You can't do no better than that. <laughs>